Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I'm setting in the Piper Archer 2 and I thought we would go over some of the features of the GI 275 Attitude Indicator, Directional Gyro, and the EIS. So you can see we're in a dark airplane here. I am in the hangar so there's a little bit of ambient light. But I'm going to go down here and I'm going to turn the battery on. When I do that our GI 275s are going to power up for us. And on the right side over here, we have the EIS. And one thing about the EIS is it is not battery powered. So when I do eventually turn that battery switch off, we will lose the EIS. So before that happens, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about it. I'm going to go over here. It looks like we have 24 gallons of fuel remaining. It gives us our flight time, hobs, tack hours. So I'm going to accept that. And you can see the ambient temperature here on the manifold pressure is 29.2 inches of mercury. We have 11 gallons of fuel in the left tank, 15 in the right tank, and zero oil pressure, and uh, zero fuel pressure. Cylinder head temperature is 72, oil temperature 67, and that makes sense. In the hangar here, it's probably about 70 degrees. So. Anyway, um, outside air, air temperature is 71 degrees here in the hangar. So I'm going to rotate through here. This is the auxiliary page, and it gives you RPM, manifold pressure, gallons per hour, exhaust gas temperature, and carb heat. I really like the carb heat feature, especially in the winter time when you go down here and you select carb heat right here you would move it here to open and back up to close but when you do that when you're doing your engine run up you can go to this page and you can see the increase in the carb temperature when you apply carb heat so the next page is our uh, exhaust gas temperature and this is also where you go through the leaning process you just touch that button right there and it'll walk you through the leaning process. You'll get first peak, second peak. It's very, very accurate. And this tells you your, each individual cylinder head temperature. Go back and this gives you cylinder head temperature. This gives you actually your exhaust gas temperature. I think I misspoke on that. And this is your cylinder head temperature. And then this is a great page. Um, fuel estimated gallons and your endurance range and then this is your uh, destination so fuel estimated at destination endurance at destination and range at destination and when we had this installed we went with the fuel probes that are magnetic and actually they're within three hundredths of a gallon in accuracy so they're extremely accurate so I notice we have a message if you can see that I'll move a little bit closer and you can see this flashing here that tells us we have a message so I'm gonna take a look at that and to check the messages you just apply pressure on the center knob and you get this uh, view here so we go and go messages nav1 and operative which makes sense because we don't have our radios on. So our GNC 355 is our NAV1 and it is an operative. So I'll just accept that and it, if you want to go back you can just hit anywhere on the screen and it's very light touch. So we can go back, press in again, we can go through options, interrupted by a phone call, Sorry, that was unplanned. Uh, anyway, we can go through options, system, page select, backlighting, and that's just about it. But this is a very capable piece of equipment. So now I'm going to, while I'm here, let's look at our battery voltage. Since we're on battery, we do not have ground power plugged in, so we have 12.4 volts. So at this time, I'm now going to turn the battery switch off. And that leaves us with this condition. So our EIS went dark, and we have external power loss, and it says shutting down in 52 seconds. So I'm going to hit stay on, stay on, and our view looks like this. 
So if you're flying along with no power at all, this is what your view is going to look like. And this is a really unique instrument. The GI-275 is so capable in whatever realm you're using it in, whether it's an EIS, attitude indicator, directional gyro. It has so many features. We'll start with the little battery indicator up here. You can see it. Uh, it looks like a cell phone battery indicator. And then this is your altitude pre-select. So whatever altitude you want to enter, let's say we're going to go to 2,500 today. Uh, I set 2,500. And your uh, altimeter, you just touch it and you can set whatever you need to. I'll just set 3.00 for now just to demonstrate. And then your heading, you can do the same thing. Whatever you touch is what you're going to get. And the cool thing is, uh, on the directional gyro, if you push this button here, it will center the heading bug. And it's hard to see here, but if you look right above where my finger's at, you'll see the heading bug. So if I turn the heading bug here, you actually see it on the attitude indicator. Now, if you set low enough, you can also see it on the directional gyro, but I don't think most people would. And so you have the heading 269 here, and you also have the heading 269 here. So uh, it's a lot of redundancy. And then we have uh, auto switching. So if we lose our attitude indicator, uh, it automatically reverts down to the HSI position would then be in the directional gyro position. And I can do that now by taking this switch right here, this auto on switch. And if I go to on, you'll see I have two attitude indicators. So I'll go back to auto and they will stay in this condition. But if I turn the knob one click either direction, they'll go back to normal. So Anyway, that's just a quick review of the EIS and the GI-275s, a little bit of their features, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up, give us a like, subscribe, share. We appreciate it. Thanks. See you in the next video.